Hello everyone and welcome back. So ready to do the meta block tutorial now. So last time we did the meta item, I decided to swap those two around since uh, I, I thought that the uh, the item block that we'd have to write would use some more concepts from the meta item. It turned out it it didn't really, but uh, we'll <laughs> we'll go with it. So I've already got the localizations here, so as before we're doing copper, tin, silver, lead, just kind of some arbitrary metal choices that are pretty common in modded Minecraft, because why not? So with a meta block, we actually need a custom item block class, and the way you register the ore is slightly different. And as with last time, I went ahead and wrote all the code and then just uh, moved the files out. So that's what the reason for the error. So we, we've got our new our new block declared here. That's pretty much the same as before. Initializing it, pretty much the same as before. But with, with the registering, we have a, a new parameter here. We are passing in an item block class. So we're actually doing the name of the class and then dot class. We're passing in the class itself. And that will tell it what item block to use for that block. Without that, we will not be able to place any but the first variant of the block. So this is absolutely necessary. All right, so let's go ahead and write the block first. Okay, so as usual, creating a new class, we will call it block metal ore. Alright, so as with the meta item, we're going to want something to store some item, or, well not item icons, block icons. But uh, it's still using the same iIcons object. And as with our other block, we need a constructor. And we need to call super and give it a material. Rock is typically what you want for ores. Okay, and let's set its hardness and blast resistance. Uh, typically you want 3.0 hardness for ores. You can modify that if you want. Resistance, uh, I believe the standard is like 15. And we could set the step sound. Uh, I don't know if this is necessary. I think the default may be sound type stone, but I, I do it anyway. It's no big deal. And let's set the harvest level. Actually, I want the harvest level to depend on the ore itself. So why don't we go ahead and open up Enum Metal and add some additional info in here. All right, so let's create a new variable and call it harvest level. Okay, so we want to update our constructor to have that in it. Okay, and let's set the harvest level of copper and tin to 1, so you can mine that with a stone pickaxe, but silver and lead will do 2, so you would need an iron pickaxe or better. Alright, and that should be all we need to change in the enum, so go ahead and close that. Okay, let's see, what else is there? Um, uh, I'll, I'll do the harvest levels at the bottom. Uh, we could do set block name. I don't know if that'll really matter in this case. But could turret and the creative tab. Alright, and for setting the harvest levels, we can do that pretty simply in the way that we've been <laughs> doing things like this. Just iterate over enum metal. And if you haven't seen the last episode where I explained enum metal, be sure to go watch that. 
uh, so that this all makes sense. Basically, that just stores uh, some information for this ore and the meta item ingot that we made last episode. Okay, and we want to, let's see, how does it go? Set harvest level, all right. Pickaxe, and the harvest level is meta dot, uh, oops, I forgot to make a, a getter for that. That'll be get harvest level. And then meta, metal dot get meta. There go. Okay, let's actually make that getter method. Probably be better to just make these variables public, honestly. Alright, there we go. There's a getter method for getting the harvest level. Okay, so let's do our add recipes. And I think I'll actually include these smelting recipes here. So again, iterating over enum metal as always. Okay, and let's go ahead and just uh, create two item stack variables just to make this uh, more readable. So for the ore, we, we've got this one metal dot get meta. Okay, and for the ingot, create a new item stack of mod items dot metal ingot, stack size one, and the same metadata. Alright, and then we just need to add a smelting recipe, which is something we've done before. So our block at the input is the ore, our output is the ingot, and I believe standard XP for like iron ore is 0.5. Um, uh, again, I, I think in the mithril ore class I actually have a link. Uh, yeah, this link right here. If you if you go to that page, it'll give you a list of smelting XP. So you can refer to that to pick whatever value is appropriate. Okay, and for the ore dictionary, that's pretty similar to the ingot, so I'll go ahead and just paste that in. The only difference is it's ore and then the name of the metal instead of ingot. Okay, now we need to override a method called damage dropped. And the reason we no we need to override this is normally this returns zero, which is not what we want. We want our block of metadata meta to drop a block of the same metadata, because in this case it wouldn't make sense to do otherwise. Now, if you had something like uh, slabs, for example, the metadata you want to drop would sometimes be different from the metadata of the block that's being mined. But in this case, we want it to be the same. Okay, and we want to override a method called get sub blocks, which is pretty much the same as get sub items. Actually, it's basically identical, it just has a different name. So again, we've got the item, a creative tab, which is, I, I don't know the purpose of, and the list, which is what we need to add our item stacks to. Okay, and again, it's pretty much the same as with our metal ingots. So item, one of them, and the metadata of the, me of the metal. <laughs> that gets confusing, meta metal. All right, and now we've got register block icons. Again, it's a, a different name, but it's pretty much the same thing as with our meta item. Okay, so we want to declare our I icon array. Its number of elements is enummetal.count. Never hard code the length of an array. Always use some kind of constant or uh, a variable or a method that would return a constant value like this. 
Okay, and a prefix. So for a mod that resource prefix. And then or followed by an underscore. And then we'll append the name of the metal onto that for every metal. Okay, there we go. And now we need to tell it what icon to use for what block. Again, it's pretty much the same as the meta item. Uh, actually, this one's a little bit different. Uh, for the meta item, we did get icon from damage. This one's just called get icon, and it has two parameters. The side of the block that's being rendered and the metadata. So it is possible to have different textures for different sides. For example, a grass block has different textures on the sides, the top, and the bottom. And as before, let's go ahead and just check the bounds of the metadata that we're being given. Okay, and this should be everything we need for our block class. So we've got our constructor, add recipes, and add or dictionary. We're overriding damage dropped, get sub blocks, register block icons, and get icon. Now for the item block class. This one is actually a lot simpler than I thought it would be. And I actually forgot about it at first. Uh, the way I do most of my mods is I have a single custom item block class that I use for almost every block but in this case we're going to be writing one for this block specifically which is the easiest way that i can think of to do this how i want it okay so it needs a constructor and it passes in the block you have to have the constructor like this you cannot customize this well you you might be able to but uh with the way that we're registering the block we're passing in the item block class we're not actually constructing the item block here. That is done in the register block method itself. And you can kind of trace this out. And there's some uh, trickery going on here with, uh, I think it's called reflection. And I actually do something kind of similar to this in uh, some of my mods. And I'm, I'm not going to bother going into explaining all this. I don't, I'm not sure I understand it 100% myself, but... But but I think that your constructor's parameter list has to match this. I'm I'm not 100% sure on that, actually. I should have done more research on this. But what we're doing will work. Okay, so we're going to call set has subtypes and true, since uh, we know that the only block we'll be using the side of block class with that is true. Set max damage to zero. Okay, and we've got two methods to override. We have get metadata. And we want to just return the meta parameter that's being passed in. Uh, I believe uh, this is actually from the item class, if I'm not mistaken. And as you can see, this normally returns zero. So that's not what we want. We need to return meta. And we're going to override get unlocalized name. Okay, and this is going to be very similar to what we did for the ingot. So let's go ahead and just get the metal. And I think I did this in like three lines before, but I'm just going to do it in two here. Just going to pass in get item damage directly. Okay, we want tile dot, then our resource prefix. Then we want or underscore the name of the metal in lower case. All right, and that's our item block class. Uh, organize imports, thank you. All 
All right, this, uh, this should work, but let's test it just to make sure I didn't make any mistakes. So again, the textures I just borrowed from Fun Ores, since that was something I already had laying around. And, uh, oh, thank you. This is not what I meant to do. Okay, and, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'd already placed them. So, as you can see, we can place all of our blocks. They've got their names localized, and they all have the same block ID, but different meta values. So that's pretty much all there is to making a meta block. Not terribly complicated. The meta item, I suppose, had a bit more code in it. Honestly, uh... But there's definitely a lot of similarities between the two. So, again, with blocks, you're actually limited to 16 possible values for the damage value, so you can't have more than 16 blocks in a single block ID. At least not without going into tile entities. If you do need, need a block that has more than 16 stakes, you need a tile entity, which is something I'm sure we'll cover in the future, and you can actually see some examples of tile entities over there. <laughs> All right, so I think that's pretty much all there is to it. So another episode down. I'm trying to think of what to do next episode. Uh, so we we could discuss tile entities, or uh, one thing I, I might like to do is kind of briefly touch on implementing APIs. For example, uh, you can... There's an NEI API, which you can use to hide items, and I actually use that in gems. You can actually see not enough items shows up in here, and let's see. I can't remember where it is exactly. But somewhere in there is something, some kind of NEI API class. Actually, I know, I know the best way to find it. Okay, so for example, here's a, an example of hiding items in NEI. So we've got uh, codechicken.nei.api.api. And uh, it has a method called hide item. If you call that on like an item, a block, or I think even an, yeah, you can use an item stack as well, and it will hide that in NEI. So, for example, here I'm hiding the debug item in NEI. So we, we could go over how to uh, do some basic stuff with NEI, uh, how to uh, use the COFH Energy API to make a an, an item that can store RF or something like that. L let me know where you want me to go, or we could do tile entities. All right, so as always, if you haven't already subscribed and you're enjoying what I'm doing, you can do that if you want to, so you can keep up with my videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.